hello everyone and welcome to another surprise Facebook video. And now it's on YouTube. But seriously, if you want to see some videos with some outtake reels and deleted scenes and behind the scenes footage, you can head over to my Facebook page. I've got hours worth of videos with a lot of boring outtakes in them, mostly broken shells and broken dreams. But if you like disappointment and can't get enough shelling content, then definitely check it out. The reason for this video is because I've been asked a few times now how I identify my shells. So I'm just going to go over that real quick for us all. The main thing I like to use is this book, A Field Guide to Australian Shells, Proso Branch Gastropods by B.R. Wilson and K. Gillette. I was recommended this book by my friend Kat, and honestly, it is such a godsend. It is like the nicest shell book ever. It usually comes with a dust cover, although sometimes because I flip through it so often, I do uh, end up taking it off so it does get out of the way. And uh, yeah, lovely hardcover book. I'm pretty sure it was like first published like 40 years ago or something. Yeah, it says, uh, ooh, uh, ooh, uh, I don't know where to check for these things. Yeah, there we go. 1971, so it's 52 years old now. That's crazy, right? I got this second hand, but it's in, you know, absolutely lovely condition. So the thing to note um, is it, it goes over all of these types of shells. I won't read them all out because it, it is quite extensive. But it's just really wonderful. The reason I like this book so, so much is because it has these lovely pictures um, of what each of the shells are. So you can like almost match them precisely. So this one, for instance, is my Ramos Murex. So it says that this is um, a two-fifths of the size. So that kind of matches up to the size in real life. This one is number one on plate 32. So I can see that plate 32, that's number three. Go back to number one. And it is the Murex, oh no, that's plate 31. Oh, I missed a page. Plate 32, it is the Chicorius Ramosus. And of course, what everyone wants to see, because it's the funnest part, the calories. Absolutely wonderful. I love the calories. So this one here, the ring top calorie, you can kind of match it to what you find right here. The uh, cat calorie, again, you can kind of match it to what you find right here. Um, the donkey calorie, just again, you can match them really, really well, and it gives you like the right sizes and everything. Uh, the Humphreys calorie right down here gives you the right sizes and everything. The zigzag calorie, um, oh, that's for the next video. I can't spoil that surprise. Um, anyway, so yeah, absolutely wonderful guide. Goes over a lot of, um, typical finds you find at the beach. Yeah, so, oh, this one, oh, I love that one. Oh, my God. It's just, like, it makes you want to, like, eat this entire book, doesn't it? So this one, the tortoise calorie. Which other one did I bring out? This one, the mole calorie. Very nice. Again, it gives you its a scientific name. So number five right there, Zapraya tulpa. I think that might be um, a different name on that now. I think that's, like, maybe the Lincina tulpa. I'm not sure. Or the tulpa tulpa. I'll have to check it out. And of course, none of these I can find, don't they look nice? The, um, the Zoila shells. Anyway, absolutely wonderful guide. Got some Wentel traps in there, got some Neurites in there. Got only a very, very small amount of, of limpets, so I, I need to go elsewhere for limpets. So that is the, um, you know, what you can find in this book. Over 700 coloured pictures of different Australian shells. Absolutely freaking wonderful. Oh, I love the cone section too. The cone section is such a godsend. So like right here, you've got the, uh, the Hebrew cone. Very, very nice. Wonderful guide. Absolutely lovely. It does focus on Australian shells, although some of these shells can be found in other countries like Indonesia and Southeast Asia and even Japan um, and even Hawaii. But yeah, absolutely wonderful guide. I do want to talk about its limitations, though. It is far from comprehensive, although it, it does cover, like I said, over 700 different Australian shell species in colour with their scientific names. Honestly, it is a wonderful book so thank you very much again to my friend Kat for recommending this one to me. It's limitations. Um, it does not cover all shell species. Oh I left, I left a donkey in there. It does not cover things like like this one, my Gaia Triton. Um, this one is Gyrenium lacunatum or something like that. It did not have any Gaia Tritons written in this book. It also, 
I think it had two shuttle shells in this book, but it did not have this one, the Rosie Spindle Cowrie shuttle shell. It didn't cover any of this uh, lace coral, which, I mean, yeah, it's not a shell, but it's made by a marine animal. I don't think it covered carrier shells either. Um, it didn't cover these. Uh, these are the little sea butterfly shells. Cavolinia uncinata is their name. So I will go over how I found out the name of these ones in just a, a few minutes as well. And what this book also lacks is that it will not tell you what juvenile shells are by their appearance. So this one is a juvenile cowrie. It hasn't grown its teeth yet. My best guess is that this is a curica cowrie. Um, the, uh, the same one as... Whew, I wonder if I can find it. So I'm in the cowrie section. Where are my thick-edged... This one. So this is a uh, curica cowrie. Number one, its name is... Should be er uh, Cypraea erinaeus or something. Oh no, here we go, Cypraea curica. So yeah, I think that this one is the juvenile form of this cowrie. So for Queensland, these ones get worn away and they look like they're like blue with dark brown stripes. And that's what it looks like in its juvenile form. So that's one of the limitations of this book. But obviously, it's an absolutely fantastic guide. Ooh, my shells! And I, I don't know where I would be without it, honestly. Put that to the side for a minute. I have bought other other sheet seashell books. I bought this one from um, the second-hand bookstore. It mostly goes over coral reef animals by these lovely people here. I bought it mostly because it has a few calories in it and it shows their live appearance. So I picked this one up from um, from my second-hand bookstore. It just shows some of the uh, the different types of octopuses and eels and cuttlefish and uh, clams and um, nudibracts and stuff like that. So it does show some of the calories. So it does show my uh, my rosy spindle calorie right there, Finocavolva rosea. I think that's lovely. You can just see what it looks like um, live. It also shows like what the map calorie looks like live. So this guy right here, it doesn't really show the, the side that shows him alive anyway. It shows the Limacina alive, a lot of other great ones, that Talpa again, the Stolida calorie, the Stolid calorie. Um, the Tiger Cowrie. So yeah, I actually, I like this book as well. I don't know if I would recommend it unless you're like a marine biologist though. I just really like the pictures so I decided to grab it. Next up, so when my books fail for shell identification, where do I go? I go straight to Mr. iPad for that. <laughs> Sorry. So the first one I would go to is this site. I live in southeast Queensland. This is uh, shells of Southeast Queensland, seqshells.com. Very, very easy to use site. I just press the drop down box for shells and it's got gastropods, bivalves, cephalopods, micro shells, and then search. I mostly just look in the gastropod section. So, you know, hands down, props to whoever made this. It is an absolutely fantastic guide as well. Again, far from comprehensive. There is a lot of shells that I can't identify, which are not here. Oh, lately there has been some land snails put into here as well, which is quite exciting. And the nice thing about this one is that I can like look at this like Phalium banditum, which is the, uh, this one, banded bonnet. And um, it has like uh, more varieties of them for you to see, like their different appearances and such. So I found that that was um, very useful for something like the, uh, the zebra volute. Oh yes, it also has a lot of cone shells. Oh, and this one here? Giant hairy triton, monoplex parthiopius, or something like that. Just shows the different appearance. So sometimes you get shells and they'll look a bit old or a bit different than what you're used to. Especially if some of them have hair or not hair or just different. Like, see, this one's like shape in the opening is a lot different than that one, for instance. So I like how it has this side here has several different species, or sorry, several different individuals of the same species. So you can compare all their appearances with. Of course, lots of cowries, same thing, lots of appearances of the cowries. Same with um, some of the limpets, actually. These look quite old, and I find them in like a newer, uh, a nicer kind of appearance of them. But again, it just shows you how they look um, at different stages of their life. Same with this one. Uh, I really needed this site to help me find the Brazier's Abalone because that was not in my seashell book. Yeah, absolutely wonderful resource for me. I'm super thankful to whoever made it. I'm not sure who made it exactly, but again, it's just wonderful, especially for moon snails as well. My uh, my seashell books don't really go into the moon snails in this area with too much uh, detail. So that was really, really good. Um, I cannot find any of the volutes. It must be further. There we go. So look at this one, the Amoria uh, zebra, the zebra volute. 
So for this one, you can see that some zebra volleys are actually very brown and some are very cream. I find very cream ones, but I would like to find a very brown or a very yellow one at some stage. Anyway, if this site fails me, my next port of call is Conchology. So you type into Google Conchology, and I go to Gastropods by Eddie Hardy. Now this site is quite uh, hard to use, and I'll explain why. You have to search for the family, and for the family name you have to actually put in uh, the scientific family name for it. So uh, I can pick an easy one and go Cypraea. That'll be an easy one to search, but if you don't know what something is, like you don't know what this one is, you won't know what to search for, you won't know what its family name is. So this one is a magnificent volute, and I think its family name is something like Symbiola. So if you didn't know that this its family name is Symbiola, with its species name Magnifica, you would not be able to um, search for it on Conchology, and that's what makes this uh, a little bit harder to use. Oh wow! So I put in um, Cypraea in the wrong spot, I should have put it into... See, I, I'm not a marine biologist, I've never actually taken any kind of scientific courses, so that makes it a little bit harder for me. Okay, now we're on to the Cypraeas. And the nice thing about this website as well is that you can pick any one of these you like, like Cyprea tigris, um, the, the tiger cowry, and it will also have a lot of different pictures of the different individuals, um, so you've got more to compare with. The other nice thing about this is that it actually does tell you its common name, and sometimes it's more than one common name. So I like that it tells me that it's the tiger cowry. I like that it tells you what its size is. I like that it tells you where you can find it. So this is a really nice website, but it's a little bit hard to use if you don't know the, um, the species of the shells you are searching for. But absolutely, this one has helped me out quite a bit. Okay, there are two other ways that I also look for seashells if I don't know what they are. The first way, which is how I identified the Cavolinia uncinata, is to just look on Instagram. So if you like post a picture of one of these on Instagram, sometimes you get people that are actually very helpful and they will tell you what you're looking at. So for these Cavolinia uncinatas, I took this picture right here, holding it up against the sky so you could see it all transparent. And I think I even asked, like, uh, oh, I, I changed the description, but I actually asked, like, hey, I don't know what these are. What, what are these? And um, I got a lot of, I got a few comments saying, hey, this one's called Cavolinia uncinata. So yeah, that was very helpful. Very, very grateful to Instagram for helping me out with that. The other method is to use good old Google. You can actually use this um, search by image on, with Google Lens, or you can actually, if you've got an Android phone, you can search with your Google Lens app. You know what, let's, do, let's take a photo. So if I wanted to ID um, oh, this one, for instance, the Arabian cowrie, let me take a quick snapshot of it. There we go. And I want to upload this to Google, so use this photo. And it will actually search for you for a good match of what this cowrie is. Please don't fail me. It's not foolproof. What? What happened? Blah, 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 blah. Anyway, it has work. It thinks it's the Marisha Arabica, which is 100% correct. That is the Arabian cowrie. Um, it's not perfect, though. There are a lot of guesswork with shells, especially if they're a bit different, like, like juvenile ones. Or pro it will probably think that this is an olive shell or something. So yeah, that is another way that I use uh, the internet to help me find some seashells. Oh, there is one other way, I almost forgot. So there is actually a Facebook group. Seashell Identification Group. So these guys are actually pretty nice. You can join the group. Um, I can't join it as a page. Uh, you can actually join the group, put up a picture of your seashells, and someone will tell you what it is. Like someone was having trouble identifying this cowrie, and someone told them it was a Naria helvolva, which is correct. It's a, it's a honey cowrie. And yeah, those are the one, two, three, four, five, six ways that I use to identify different seashells. And uh, yeah, thank you very much if you've watched all of this. You've uh, seen a look into the inner workings of uh, how I do stuff. And uh, that's it for this time, everyone. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. I'll try to be as helpful as possible. And uh, yeah, thanks, everyone. Bye!